Hi, uh, in this video, I like to talk a little bit about the reversible Carnot cycle, right? In particular, I will talk about something called the efficiency, the efficiency of a machine that goes through this reversible cycle, right? So, the major point that we want to address is the efficiency of converting heat into work. Can heat, heat be converted into work? And, is, and if so, to what, to what extent, right? That's the major point that I want to address in this video. Heat being converted into work and the extent to which it can be accomplished. Okay? Great. To do that, to discuss this, we're going to select a system, right, that is going to do the work, that's going to do the conversion of heat into work. Our system is going to be an ideal system. Okay? So system An ideal gas, I'm sorry. Not an ideal gas, not an ideal system, but an ideal gas. That's gonna be our system, right? So suppose that this, this gas undergoes a number of steps, right? Or, or a number of processes starting at some state, right? Characterized by pressure, volume, and temperature, and then at the very end of the cycle, it has the same values of pressure, volume, and temperature. So that's why we call it a cycle. So we're going to have a process that is reversible. Okay. So the, the system will undergo reversible processes. Right? So let's represent that reversible process and the cycle in this diagram. Okay? So we're going to have the gas at some initial point characterized by this lowercase a, right? And it will suffer or it will undergo an expansion. So this axis here is volume. It increases from left to right. So from A to B, the system is increasing its volume. And this axis here is pressure. Right? So pressure decreases top down. Okay? So in the first step, A to B, the system is going to expand. Right? But A, B, we'll call it path A, B, is going to be an expansion. Not only that, it's going to happen under isothermal conditions. So there is an isothermal expansion of the gas as you go from A to B. The temperature at which this occurs is going to be labeled T hot. And the meaning of that will be apparent a few minutes later. B to C, as you can see, is another expansion. So for path. B to C, we have another expansion. But in this case, it is an adiabatic expansion. So the condition is adiabatic. Okay? So isothermal expansion followed by adiabatic expansion. So we are halfway to go back to the initial state. Right? So let's continue with the next two steps. Next step would be going from C to D. As you can see, C is higher volume than D. Therefore, path CD is going to be a compression. Okay? And it's going to be under 
isothermal condition. So isothermal. Isothermal. And from D to A, it's also a compression, right? But this one is adiabatic. Okay. So in this particular illustration of the Carnot cycle, we see that it is made up of four steps: an isothermal expansion followed by adiabatic expansion, followed by isothermal compression, and then finally followed by an adiabatic compression. So we go back to our initial state, A, B, B, C, C, D, and then end up at the same point that we started, D, A, an A. Okay? So that's a takeaway message. The Carnot cycle is a series of steps, isothermal expansion followed by isothermal, I'm sorry, by adiabatic expansion and then isothermal compression, adiabatic comp compression. So it's isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal, adiabatic. That's the idea, right? And in this case, we only consider four steps. There may be, there can be more steps, but they are always alternating isothermal with adiabatic. Okay, that being said, it is time for us to define efficiency in such a system. Efficiency is going to be defined as the amount or the magnitude of the work performed by the system, the net work performed by the system and the surroundings, represented by W cycle, divided by the amount of heat that was input into the system at the very beginning in step or in position A. So we, we're going to call that QAB. Remember, for it to go from A to B, for that expansion, heat is entered into the system and then it expands, right? So if you have a gas, an ideal gas, and you add heat to it under isothermal conditions, it's going to expand. And that expansion will produce work, right? So there will be heat entered into the system. There will be a network done by the system when the cycle is completed. And the ratio of these two quantities, and we use the magnitude of the network, because work done by the system and the surroundings will have a negative sign. So that efficiency has a positive sign then we use the magnitude of that work. So that ratio is going to be Q, uh, is what we call the efficiency of the machine. Okay? It turns out that the magnitude of the work is going to be equal to QAB, the amount of heat entered into the system or withdrawn by the system from the surroundings plus the amount of heat that has been released by the system in this step from C to D. So expansion, isothermal expansion requires heat input into the system. Isothermal compression means the system will release a heat into the surroundings. The sum of these two quantities equal the magnitude of the work, the network done by the system during this cycle. In a, in a separate video, we're going to demonstrate this or to derive these relationships. By now, we are just using them. Okay? So, this divided by QAB is going to be our efficiency. So, we're going to demonstrate in the next minute or two that the efficiency can never be equal to one, or that means 100%. In other words, 
heat cannot be converted into work 100%. We'll see that using this relationship here. Okay, so keep this in mind. So I will rewrite it here. Efficiency is equal to QAB plus QCD over QAB. This can be rearranged into QAB over QAB plus QCD over QAB which is the same as this divided by this is just 1 plus QCD over QAB. What do we know? Well, the efficiency, the only way it can be more than 1 if is this quantity is positive. QCD over QAB is a plus. We have a plus here, that doesn't mean this ratio is a plus. So let's think about it. QAB, heat entered into the system. Therefore, QAB is larger than zero. QCD, QCD in this step, is heat released by the system into the surroundings. So that means QCD less than zero. Therefore, this ratio, QCD over QAB, must be less than zero, a negative quantity. So this can be rewritten as 1 minus, and then you just use the magnitude of CD over QAB. So now you see that this is always going to be here. This is different from zero, and in fact, less than zero. So efficiency is going to be one minus something, in other words, less than one. So this demonstrates that heat cannot be converted into work 100%. And we have used as an example, or to illustrate that fact, the reversible Carnot cycle. Okay. In the next video no in the next few minutes let's let's use one more minute here to present another definition of of the efficiency and that is t hat minus t cold over t hat what is T hat? What is T cold? At point A, or in the first step, A to B, is isothermal. Heat has been entered into the system. That means the system has a higher temperature, right, than in the compression component. So this AB here, in terms of temperature, is higher in temperature than in going from C to D. Right? So that's what we call T hat. T cold, remember, B to C is an expansion, but it's adiabatic. Adiabatic expansion we learn in class in a reversible process. Adiabatic expansion is cooling. So the temperature is going to be colder than it was before the expansion. So here you have T hot, and once this expansion happens, then we call it T cold. In other words, it's lower temperature. So the use of temperatures this way, right, T hot minus T cold over T hot, also defines efficiency, right? What I like you to do at home is to equate these two forms and show that QAB over T hat plus Q C D over T cold is equal to zero. So that's a take home assignment. I hope you do that. Make this equal to this 
and find this relationship. This is useful because it allows us to define this, this relationship, which end up being the Q reversible over T is what we learn in class is entropy. Okay? So I hope you guys do that. This equal this is oh this equal this can be used to arrive at this expression, which in turn is used to arrive at this relationship. Okay. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy doing this homework. Bye. <laughs>